All right, Mr. Robinson, if you'll look on that big screen to your left, do you see your attorneys on the screen? Okay, and counsel, do you all see your client on the Zoom screen? No, actually the chief bailiff is, the video is off. Can we get the video turned on here? For some reason, not sure why. Oh, there it is, okay, it's on now. So do you see him and hear him? Okay, very good. All right, we're here on this Monday for a hearing on motion to be set, and it is specifically a bond motion filed, I believe in 21 CF 2332, is that correct? Partially, uh, yes ma'am. Oh, well, and I guess eight to, no, wait a minute. It's, if defense counsel filed a, a bond motion and then alternatively a motion for a uh, an adversary preliminary hearing based on um, a, what they frame as an issue with the arrest date. Right. Um, so we had agreed that this this week's hearing would be a hearing on whether or not they were actually entitled to the APH hearing and then address the APH hearing if granted or the Correct. hearing at another date. Okay. All right. Well, I have availability this week for such a hearing, I presume. I don't know how long you all expect it to take, but let me tell you what I have in terms of availability. Yes, ma'am. I can do it tomorrow, anytime between 2.30 and 5. I can do it Wednesday, anytime between 2.30 and 4. I can do it Thursday, anytime between 2.15 and 5. And then I have Friday afternoon, anytime between 1.30 and 5. So I defer to defense counsel, but I would ask for either Thursday or Friday if either of those times work for them. And I would Thursday. imagine. Okay, Thursday, I have a hearing until 2.15, so I could do it right at 2.15. Um, and how long do you anticipate it to last? Your Honor, I'm going to ask the government on that. So it depends on what we're doing. If it's a matter of a hearing on whether we're entitled to an APH, my argument is in the motion. There would be small further argument. The last time we were in court, the government yeah, indicated more, they may be calling witnesses. So I would defer to them on the amount of time they would need for the APH issue. Then I can answer the question about the bond issue separately. Well, I think that's what we're going to do first is uh, have a hearing about whether or not you're entitled to an APH. I guess there needs to be testimony because I know there's disagreement as to, I guess, when officially the defendant was arrested. Yes, ma'am. So right. I'll probably need to hear some testimony about that. I'll hear a legal argument and then I'll rule. And then um, if, if I find you're not entitled to an APH, that ends that. If I find that you are, then we'll need to schedule one. But it will be for another that's day. In the event that the court, and, and again, we believe that the court should grant the APH, but in the event the court doesn't, would we be able to proceed immediately into the bond issue on Thursday? It would only take us about a half hour. Um, we're asking in the we're asking on the first case, the 2020, no matter what, for a reduction of the million dollar bond, given change of the evidence and the inability of our client to pay the bond. On the other case, if we don't get the APH, there is a $3 million bond in place. We would be moving for reduction of that as well, too, in line with the evidence. Um, but it was also required because the bond was not tailored uh, to Mr. Robinson's net worth. It was just set without us present. All right. So let me ask the state. Separate and apart from the APH matters, would you be prepared to go forward with the bond hearing on Thursday? I I, the That's answer is one. yes, but this is real, this is real. We, got what hesitancy. we would Just call move. witnesses. We'll them the witnesses we would call from no. the bond hearing, the APA hearing may have some overlap, but we would not call those witnesses if the APA hearing is not granted. So I guess what I had anticipated is we would have a hearing right, to determine whether or not there was an APA hearing. And then based on the court's ruling, we would either have an APA hearing and a bond motion or a bond motion or a bond hearing. Um, so I, I guess I wasn't anticipating that those would go this week based on communication not available. last time, but I can, I can certainly be ready for the APA hearing. I can try to be ready for the bond hearing if the court wants to do it this week. Well, I can do one Thursday, one Friday, depending on, you know, what my ruling will be. I mean, I don't know what the ruling will be, but let's assume, let's assume for the sake of argument, I deny APH, then we could do a bond hearing on Friday. If I grant APH, I don't know if you all will be ready for APH on Friday and a bond hearing on Friday. 
that would determine, I guess, on availability Fire of witnesses that either side may call. So, um, you know, I, and I can't begin to guess yet what I'm going to rule on because I haven't heard anything. So I, I don't know. That, that's the one way I could offer it, kind of divide it up Thursday, Friday or Thursday. And then the problem is I'm not here next week, the week of March 7th. So we could have no hearing the week of March 7th. And then the week of March 14th, currently I am scheduled to be in a one to two week first degree murder trial. And if it goes, I will have time for no hearings for any defendant in that time period. If it doesn't go, certainly I'll have plenty of time available, but it's a 2017 case yes, that has been set 11 times previously. I think it was yours at one point. Did I, you have I'm Chad Absher? Yes, ma'am. I'm on that case as well. Oh, you're on it as well. So you know. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Are you second chairing, Ms. French? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Is it going to be two weeks? Please tell me it isn't going to be two weeks. It depends on what defense counsel does. Okay. And, Your Honor, I could, uh, and something else would apply as well, too. I don't know if to, to throw that in there, but legally, he wouldn't be entitled to an APH if he is no longer in custody. So if the court proceeds on the motion to reduce bond and without just hypothetically, if the court were to grant the motions to reduce bond and he was he was able to post it, he then isn't entitled to an APH because that only applies to people who are incarcerated. I understand, so, but not knowing, uh, you know, how yeah, exactly. the rulings are going to go, I'm trying to tentatively schedule a variety of different matters here in multi-step. So the first step, of course, is we need to determine whether you're entitled to an APH and that then we will schedule for this Thursday which is March the 3rd at 2.15 p.m. for that hearing. And what I would say then is go ahead and just check with your respective witnesses about availability for Friday afternoon in the event that we need to go forward Friday with either a bond hearing or an APH hearing. Just check and, and I can... Um, we can then, I guess, schedule that when we come back on Thursday. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Works for us, Your Honor. All right. And I will see you all back here Thursday at 2.15. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Your Honor, if I may ask one other question while we're on the record, it is now the, the end of February. And the, the government, the last time in court earlier this month, said that we'd have the body scanned at the end of this month. We haven't received anything. And if I can ask through the court over to the state, if there's an update, my emails went unanswered last week. Mr. Cooper sent me a text message this morning saying he got an email late Friday. We are still waiting on the results. He was told that they will have them in March. In March, okay. All right. That's the response. All thank right. You. All right, thank you very much. I'll see y'all Thursday. See you Thursday, Judge.